his son's had first birthday is today, first birthday so we today. want to get him in and out. So, um, what you have in front of you is a application for a revocable permit for I Love New York Pizza. What they would like to do is replace their uh, deck that they currently have. The deck has been there for uh, quite some time. Uh, it's in a condition of disrepair. I'd like to repair the deck. Three feet of that deck. The deck goes to the back of the sidewalk. However, the property line, as in most cases, is not the back of the sidewalk, so three feet of the deck is in the right of way. Uh, codes will be inspecting the deck. The city has no objection to uh, this being in the right of way as long as they are granted this permit. Questions, comments? How much is the narrow sidewalk? It's, this is not going to change the sidewalk at all. The, the sidewalk right now is, I believe, there's a two foot uh, utility strip, and then there's a five foot sidewalk, and then they have stairs that are internal. They're not external, so there's stairs that are internal to the deck, and it's a flush deck. They're not going to be coming out at all any farther. Uh, I believe this deck is original from Ben and Jerry's, so you know it's been uh, it's been there for quite some time, and I, we're going to be able to maintain at least five feet of clear space on uh, for pedestrians. Other questions or comments? I'll move in that chair. Okay. Second. Okay. All those favor? Bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. <laughs> we'll have pictures of Facebook with your party hat on. Very nice. <laughs> okay, uniform rental and laundry service bid, Mr. Howard. So this is for the uh, uniform rental that we'd like to enter in agreement with uh, Unifirst Corporation. Uh, which this went out last year for bid. Uh, we have two respondents to the bid. Um, one did not meet the qualifications, uh, and the other came through with everything uh, that, we, that we needed to go with. So uh, we'd like to enter into that contract for one year, and then next year we would reach out even further and try to get more bidders um, to uh, come aboard. I noticed that the bid is, it talks about um, uniforms and lab coats and all this. So, um, every one of these department people are wearing some type of uniform? Everyone has a certain either uniform or laundry service that is provided for by Unifirst, uh, whether it be uniforms, whether it be towels, um, mop heads things like that. So we're all affected, you know, between the facilities, fire, sewer, street, wastewater treatment plant, um, water department, and, uh, and uh, between the pump station and the maintenance. So yes, everybody has a little piece into it. So it's not all uniform, it's all the other things that you just know. Correct. Okay. Other questions, comments? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, how does this bid price compare to last year, Jeremy? Where are we? Last year, they are right on the same numbers as what we had last year. They've held us, um, held us to the same numbers as where we were. So there was really no no increase, no increase at all for that. So they've been a very reliable vendor for us. Um, none of our departments have had an issue with them and the products that they supply to us. So that's why we really feel that uh, Universe is one of the better quality people that we can build. Uh, that is um, 25500 Yes, sir. And that's a culmination of everything. All the departments yes. listed here? Yep. Okay. Other I'd questions like, or comments? I'd like okay. to move this. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any Thank other business to come before government operation? Adjourn. Okay. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. I'm going to call order City Development and Planning. Um, first item on the agenda concerns the land bank. And Mr. Hoffman is here to talk to us about that. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Um, uh, as you have on your request form, uh, it's an exciting time for land banks and revitalization in Schenectady. But it's time to get down to the nitty gritty. It's, uh, we have to put our application into the Attorney General for the uh, funding that we're requesting. Uh, a million dollars and maybe more uh, for the land bank for Amsterdam and County and the city. And in order uh, to put that application in the way we have it planned right now, we're going to be asking for approximately 31 properties in the eastern end of the neighborhood and, and maybe some others. Um, but we need a resolution of support 
uh, and a commitment to transfer the property so that when we put the application in, uh, we're going to be in a resolution from the city and from the county and from Amsterdam to go along with the application. So that's the, uh, the basics of it. I'll try to answer any questions you have about it. Uh, you know, raise here to answer any questions that uh, Metroplex is you know, assisting us in this, and, you know, as is the city and, 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 and Amsterdam. Uh, we're talking of the 21 properties in the Eastern Avenue corridor, right. uh, not on Eastern Avenue. Only. Not not just on the street, but in the in, in the whole up vicinity, in, up in the neighborhoods, up in the back there. The city owns some vacant lots and some other properties. You know, we want to do as thorough a job in that neighborhood as we can. And the intention is to demolish, and uh, rehab also. Yes, we, we hope to demolish, we hope to rehab, and some of them are vacant now. We hope to clean them up and maybe do, um, uh, you know probably next door, maybe do a community garden. And we also have a facade program going in Eastern Avenue neighborhood right now where homeowners can apply to the land bank for up to $5,000 in uh, assistance to, to help with the outside with the facade of the property. Uh, and this $3 million is coming towards Connecticut? All the $3 million? The, the, the land bank uh, is with Amsterdam, the county, and the city. Okay. okay, so part of the three million, they, they pretty much said they're going to, uh, you know, three million is available to each landmate. We may ask for a little more because Amsterdam has some things going. Okay. Um, and, you know, the county has a couple of things that, that we may want to ask for too. But we said we hope to get the three million for the land bank. It will, will all go to the city. We're hoping the lion's share of it, you know, two, two and a half, two and a quarter to that effect. Yeah. Okay. Ms. Porterfield? Thank you. I just want to know what, what the share would be. So yeah. you can answer that question. Yeah, we're you know, going to ask for a little more uh, you know, with you know, specific projects in mind. Uh, you know, and, and we're calculating all that and uh, you know, getting the application ready. And, and Ms. Poudre, I asked this question, but I couldn't hear. Uh, so all the properties that you're, that you're talking about, 31 properties, all belong to the city currently. They're all currently? Some are owned by Sura. So we're going to right, so we're, yeah. And I believe some of them are in the, the most recent round of foreclosures. I'm not quite sure how final that is, but uh, several of them are in that recent round. Mr. Kozier. Thank you. Uh, just a couple of comments here and a question. Uh, and again, wonderful partnership uh, with uh, the Land Bank, with Metroplex, Sir, and IDA uh, for uh, working in our neighborhoods. We've been talking about uh, Metroplex not. Uh, getting into the neighbors for a long, long time. We know they've been doing a great work with downtown. And again, uh, my theory is the, the city is connected to the heart is the downtown. And without the arteries, we are now gonna move into the arteries and start working into the neighborhoods. Eastern Avenue is certainly a, a, an area of need. Uh, and again, there's many of those buildings that you have said are vacant and uh, just completely uh, need to be taken down. Um, the other question is, how often does this application come forward um, from the state? Is this something that's a yearly basis or uh, with land banking funding? They've announced it. Last year they announced the first. Um, gave hints about another one, so then they announced another one this year. Uh, and, and they've also indicated that there will more than likely be a third round next year. And the reason I ask that is, is uh, I'm sure we're all aware with the Snappy City School District. Um, reorganize and redistrict uh, the buildings. Uh, 2016, Albert Avenue School is slated to be closed. I'd really like to see if Metroplex and, and the Land Bank can continue to work on that Eastern Avenue corridor and with the school district perhaps, maybe turn that vacant building uh, into some housing for seniors or for veterans, uh, as we're talking about in some of the other uh, neighborhoods. And I think it'd just be a wonderful way to partner with the school rather than to wait it uh, for a building to burn down like we did on Brandywine for so many years. Uh, so again, uh, if we can keep that in the back of our minds, you know, long range plan uh, to work with, partner with the school district on the next one maybe and, and take a look at that Elmer Avenue uh, school uh, to utilize it for some potential housing. The, the land banks have um, generated a lot of credibility around the state and not only the Attorney General but some of the other um, funding sources, you know, we hope will be coming forward. As the Attorney General settles with the, the large foreclosing banks, uh, settles their, you know, their lawsuits with them, that's the funding. And they want to make sure that it's used for revitalization <clears throat> in areas where those foreclosures took place. So they don't want to get, want to let us get too far off the dime there. Mm -hmm. But they have indicated that there will be continual funding for land banks 
uh, at least into 2015. There we go. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions? Mr. Gillum, did you want to add anything? Yeah, just an interesting point. Thank David Hogan and from our staff. It's been really blazing a trail on Eastern, and we were thrilled to have uh, Attorney General Schneiderman in Schenectady with the mayor, Mayor of Amsterdam, and many of you were there. We really appreciate, and we put to good use the $150,000 that he provided us last year, leveraged it with Metroplex dollars and IDA dollars to see real meaningful progress take place on Eastern. And this is a great opportunity, as Legislator often said, to uh, apply for $3 million. This state funding that is available, $20 million statewide, is all money that uh, the mayor made this point very well at the event. It's all money that he won in legal actions against these large foreclosing banks. So it is not taxpayer money. It is money that he won for, the, for his efforts in uh, legal actions on foreclosure cases. So it's, in effect, uh, found money for the state. and. Uh, working very closely with Steve and the land bank and the mayor and his team to, uh, to try to bring home this, this next, uh, this next uh, win, if you will, or this next allocation of dollars. Um, and uh, we're really appreciative of your support. We need to send forward a strong resolution from the city and from the county legislature to say that we want this money. We want to aggressively compete for it. We're going to put it to good use here in Schenectady. We have had some preliminary discussions with the school district on that uh, on that school, uh, great idea. It could be a conversion to uh, to housing, and it fits right into the whole Eastern Avenue corridor. So we've had very preliminary discussions at this point, but it is something that we have on the radar screen. And as more things get done on Eastern, we'll have more developers and more people interested in investing there, so that we can play it well to the, uh, the school. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? If not, I'll entertain a motion to. Um, happy to move it. I think we've been working toward this part of the land bank. We've really set a solid foundation to work off of, and it's exciting to see um, it's starting to really fall into motion, but at a critical time of being well organized to move forward, not just willy nilly. So I'm, I'm thrilled to move it. A second by Ms. Porterfield. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank okay, you. thank, thank you. you. Thanks, Robin. Thank you. All right, uh, second item on the agenda was a ceremonial resolution for Parekas. Uh, they just had their 100th anniversary. The end of my name. I'm happy to move that. Okay, seconded by Ms. Porterfield. So All in favor? Coming up then? Aye. Uh, okay. All right, if there's nothing else to come before city de development and planning, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Call to order public safety, dog holding facility, yep. assistant Paolo chief, Pavo. Good evening. Good evening. Um, everybody knows where we came from and the challenges that we've had in the past with with uh, the exorbitant amount of dogs that that we um, we take into custody every year. And with that, we built the facility. And the facility is is uh, is in nice shape. It's brand new. Um, it's kept clean and neat, and the temperature is is uh, fine and adequate for the dogs. Um, we try to um, adopt as many dogs or transfer the ownership to them. We we evaluate all the dogs uh, prior to transfer, and hopefully, um, in hopes of of having the transfer adopted opposed to euthanizing. Um, the, um, well, uh, do you have any questions? I mean, I'm not quite sure um, the, what are some of the issues. Um, we know that the city works on a tight budget, right? And we know that all the city workers are super busy. So I think what came out to me strongest was how can we leverage people who have this as their passion, not necessarily their job, right? Because we certainly saw that there's support, there's people that want to come into the facility, that want to help take care of the dogs, we walk them, they're certainly already donating food and toys. So how can we safely leverage that? Because to me, it's just like we encourage our neighborhood associations to get out into the parks and pick up you know, litter and, you know, right. help 
maintain a healthier city atmosphere overall, how can we use that and well, leverage that volunteerism? We, we do work with a lot of other agencies and have and still do um, as far as um, um, some guidance. Because let's face it, we this is relatively new to us. Mm -hmm. And um, so we, we've been searching out guidance. We've been attending training sessions to educate ourselves and learn on, on best means and, and best ways to handle situations like this. Uh, I think some of the questions that you have is regarding some other volunteers coming in, to me I see that as some legal issues that probably would sit better with Corporation Council, um, but certainly we're not opposed to that. And, and again, we have been working with other um, organizations or associations to uh, help us with, with the dogs. Is this anything that legal assistance thus far? There's there's something, there are things we can do. We can study. It's mostly just uh, people tell us what groups want to come in and do. We can evaluate what things are possible, what things aren't. It's a little bit more specific stuff. Yes. Uh, Chief, what is the policy right now when a dog is brought in as far as when are they fed, uh, how many times are they fed a day? They're, they're fed, they're, fed um, and they're watered every day, there's water. They're fed, um, we kind of changed that a little bit because we were feeding them twice a day. And what happens there, of course, is you feed them twice a day, then they excrete twice a day. So we've scaled that back to feed them once a day. But they're also given treats throughout the day as well. Um, and who, treats to eat. Whose job is that? The, the animal control officers we have, we have two full-time and one part-time. We just lost one, and I just received four applications, and hopefully this week, I'll be uh, conducting interviews to hire, I'd like to hire a couple more. And fortunately, it looks like I have some good applicants. So I'm going to hire, hopefully two, maybe more, I don't know. But I have a budget, obviously, to work with, and, and I'm not worried about that budget for spending it. I, I think we can live within it without a problem. Within your budget, would it be possible to hire someone to be there? Because from what I understand, I don't think 24 hours is acceptable by some guidelines. Maybe it might be Agnew Markets, I can't tell you off the top of my head. Um, I thought it was supposed to be 12 hours. Well, especially for water. I it's recommended um, that they always have water. And we have we check on them. Uh, they're five days a week, they're checked on. They're, there's somebody working. Uh, two shifts, and then um, on Sundays we have a part timer come in. We had one coming in on Saturdays. Of course, you know, she resigned about three weeks ago. Um, and yeah, in some days like in Sundays into Mondays, it could be a stretch, a period of time where there's not, there's no one there. But, but we make sure, we check on them, and make sure they have one. So this is a manpower issue then at times? Is so that it is, and, that, and hopefully soon and that will be resolved. In, in what way? By hiring, hiring more part-timers. Do we have money in the budget to do that, or is that something to look at? Absolutely, we do. Because it seems to me like the biggest complaint, too, was interaction. I know this is a short-term facility, I understand mm -hmm. that, but sometimes it's turning into a long-term facility for some of these dogs that that dog... But that's have. rare. Yeah, I understand. But they don't have any really real human interaction as far as somebody to take them out. Unless Ms. Perazzo brought it up. You know, if we have people that are willing to do this... The, the, dogs, the dogs are the ones that are, are manageable. They're, they're exercised. They're taken out and they're walked. The dangerous dogs. dogs are a different story. Right. That that is brought. Okay. This is by the animal control officers. Yes. Walk them. Yes. However, um, we had a meeting recently with the mayor, and um, 
in one of our humane societies that uh, is willing to help us out some more. They already do work with us on a daily basis and we want to help some more and um, we're going to be looking at possible an outside run for the dogs and we can uh, let them run outside be fenced in, caged in there. So we're, we're researching that now. Just one other question for us. Is this, and I know it's come up other times with other things when we ask for volunteers, is this going to be a unit work problem if volunteers come out? Again, that's to me that's a legal question. That's something it would depend important. on what it's exactly the volunteers are going to do. Can you just a little more specific as far as if they came to walk the dogs, is that a problem? I'm not comfortable right now giving the specifics of the different situations. I want to sit down, go through the contract, and then hear what exactly people are proposing to have them do, and kind of give a case by case answer. Ms. Brazo. How can we set it up so that the animal control officer's position defaults to another position within the city? Because, I mean, how are we protecting to make sure that one of our full time animal control officers steps out in the street and gets run over by a bus, God forbid, right? How are we protecting that that defaults somewhere else? It can, can, can that be, can we have a fail safe method, right? In other words, if somebody needs to go on vacation, mm -hmm. if we lose a part time person or whatever, sure. can that, can we have a backup person that's always available or a backup position that always defaults mm -hmm. to ensure that that's constant? Exactly, and that's one of the challenges right now, especially losing one of the part-timers. So, but we've been managing, we've been, you know, taking care of that. But more, more, that's why I, I um, um, requested permission to hire possibly a couple extra part-timers. But, but instead of hiring additional staff, um, that would tax the budget if we have a default person. So, I, you know, uh, whatever, you know, I, I don't know who. But. And, and that's something else I looked into today. I spoke to Carl Olson regarding getting some help and he was said, whatever I can do for you, let me know. So, again, and we're, we're checking all options here, all options. I just feel like it's it's up to us to work as hard as we can possibly work to make sure this happens as fast as it can possibly happen, um, and that we're better. You know, mm -hmm. not to say it was bad, but we're better. Absolutely, because we can always be better. You know, I agree. Um, and especially for this vulnerable population, you know, yeah. even if it is a temporary situation. Sure. And again, I would love to see. We have passionate people who love animals. I would love to see them be able to have the ability to assist the city. Because we have some we wonderful programs with our, in our city that people give eagerly of their time and effort. And um, I don't see why we can't incorporate that in this part of the city too. Can we look at the bottom of this feeding system? The automated fetus system. Um, sure, absolutely. Yeah. What was the question? Automated feeding system. Yeah. Can you put that in the back to us? Yeah. Absolutely. What happens? Is there any way within the budget, or if we have to look at it because we're coming up to a budget, to have the facility? with a person there, at least on a regular basis. So we don't have to worry about if somebody's on vacation, at least on a five-day basis, then somebody to fill in on the weekend. So I think ultimately that would be the best thing if the dish is going over or somebody's looking for a dog, they know where to come, if they lost their pet. Is, it, that, is it, that a possibility? It, it. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, if there's enough money there, that's always the question. You know, do we have, you know, could we hire a professional, somebody that is familiar with this type of facility and manage it? That would be, that would be ideal. Mm -hmm. Another thing that really jumped out at me that I thought was a, a very strong point that we can 
easily rectify is the amount of information on our website. Um, and uh, is that, I, I'm sorry that I don't know, but is it a county function or a city function? That it looked like it was, it went to the county, but I, I could be wrong. Website for the, where it says, you know, who they call, if we could have pictures. And again, if we have, I, I think one of the volunteer services available to us was somebody who was willing to do web work. Somebody could snap a picture and say, found in this spot on this day, you know, that, you know, any kind of information or even who to call because, I mean, that's, I think, an important resource. And then if we can even link out to local shelters and things of that nature where the shelter can say, okay, click here to visit the city's temporary holding and find your dog. I mean, you know, we're in the world of information technology now, and that's the way everyone navigates, and it just seems like that's an easy lift for us. We, uh, we met with... I'm sorry, go ahead. Uh, a conversation with Steve Caparizzo, we were looking to implement that type of program right after Labor Day to be able to uh, get photographs of dogs as they come in, be able to post them. And again, the real goal is that we don't have any animals in that facility. And it's, we've started it uh, over the last year is doing the dog licensing so that dogs have the tags on that we can identify them. Uh, when they do get uh, loose and are able to return them to their owner. And it also narrows down that group of uh, owners that probably should not have a pet to begin with because that they uh, you know, create an environment where the pets and dogs really become uh, vicious and are not really conducive or ones that we want in the city at all. You know, the pets become victims when it's really the owners that have facilitated that or created an environment that, <coughs> excuse me, allows it to happen. I respect that, but I also think there's another contingent of people whose dog digs under the fence and takes off, you know, and they're great owners. And I think, right. you know, again, it's of almost no cost to the city to have that website right. fully listed with information. But again, if that dog has a tag on it, when it gets out underneath the fence, right. it is very That's quickly right. identified and able to be reunited with its owner. Go ahead. My question is regarding feeding the dogs. You said you're down to once a day. Um, I have a little concern with that. I'm not an own the animal, but I think. Well, that's after consulting with people that are very familiar with dogs. They said that's fine. So, so once you, um, once the other people are hired that you're talking about hiring part time, is that going to, is that, that's now because you don't have enough staff? Is that why that is? And then, you know, there's no one to clean up behind the dogs after, after they've gone to the bathroom. So there's no one to clean up. So once you hire more staff, which is what you're talking about, will that change and will they now be able to be fed more than once a day? I don't know. I, I'm not sure. I mean, that's something that it was recommended to me that, you know, they only have to eat once a day. And I got it from more than one source. So, I don't know if that is true. I'm not sure. We should only eat once a day. I don't find that acceptable myself. I mean, I'll certainly look into it again. And you also mentioned they're going to be creating an outdoor run so the dogs can get out, exercise. That's, yes, something that we're looking into. I don't have a commitment yet on that, but there's some issues with that that we have to be concerned with. And is there uh, diseases and, and um, what kind, you know, is it going to be grass? Is it going to be pavement? Uh, how are we going to clean it? Do we have to seal it? I mean, there's, there's issues in how it's going to be designed. So, I mean, it's early stages that we're looking into that. I mean, just a lot of questions yet. But obviously, there's people have it. There, there's facilities that have it. So we'll, we'll tap into them and we'll question them. And just the same way we did when we built this facility. We went out in the field and talked to a lot of people. We went to different facilities and figured out what the best way to do it. Go ahead, Mr. Is there, is there one, any way at some point you're partnering with the county to have a county-run facility 
or is it mandated that the city has to have their own facility? We can look at those options again. That was put in place because our options were eliminated. Some of the facilities were just not taking the dogs. And the cost was so high, both in terms of uh, boarding them and transporting them beyond the immediate uh, boundaries of the city. Has there been any other talks with I have not had any. Because it has to be expensive for all the municipalities that are thinking of how to go along with kind of the same idea, maybe you know, more glaring in the city. But, I mean, it, it isn't. It's a clean facility where we have it, you know, from what I've seen at the time. But of course, we're talking about it may be clean now because we're not feeding the dogs enough. But we'll put that aside. It's not. Even Brad Shear said that it was pretty pungent down there when he went there. And at times, there is that no matter how that facility is taken care of, it's where the waste treatment plant is. So uh, I'd like to see maybe at some point we can talk to the county, so, you know, move this in a partnership, and we pay to it with the county to. Uh, try to combine and maybe have this facility in another place and it might be more conducive having volunteers to come in because that's not the ideal place for anybody to go uh, down there actually. And I know, again, I understand it's a short-term facility, but um, it does, you know, I think the place that it is is an issue. That's my personal feelings. Any other question? I'm just going to suggest to you that we may want to ask for kind of regular updates as you know, things start to happen. So, just me. Well, if you're planning on hiring two more of the part time staff, that will bring a total of how many part time yeah. staff? Three. Three part time, three part time. Two full time, and hopefully three part time. Three part time, five to. Right. Just to recap, because we talked about a lot of different things. What I would, I would like to see us talk about very quickly, because it's possible for us to do so, is have a report for legal on how we might um, be able to utilize volunteers safely for the city in the police contract. Um, and also, where we might default this animal control position to another position should we come up in a situation that we're short staffed. I think those are immediate things that we have to look into um, other things will take time, um, but those were my, and I, and I understand the mayor's working on the website, and that will happen after Labor Day, so that's, those would be my three priorities right now. Um, in the meantime, I'm just going to do a little um, looking into the feeding thing, because we could be perfectly in line with that. I mean, human dog, I don't know. I don't know what the guidelines are, um, but I'm willing to do a little bit of research on that, too. But those are some things I'd like to see on our next committee agenda and not have this Later. Yeah. So you're asking for another update in two weeks? Uh, I would possible? like an update on the possibilities of where that animal control position can default to okay. and what our legal uh, safety zones are in utilizing volunteers, how we might utilize volunteers to go forward. Can we ask for an update in two weeks? Sure. Okay. It's on the agenda for next week. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks, Chief. Any other business for public safety? Adjourn. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Thank you. Okay, folks, order health and recreation. Um, the 1950 was Connected Willie Team's 60th anniversary. Mr. Riggy? Yes, um, the 60th anniversary is Connected winning the World Series is, um, <laughs> this August, so I think it's after the time that we honor that uh, resolution uh, for the great feat that the great 1954. Have some people who will be here to accept it. Like I said, we'll follow with the uh, renaming of that proportion of what we're at. Any questions? Uh, we'll Second. Any second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Uh, anything else for another on that? Okay. Uh, this board of field? Yes. Uh, about the Little League fields, and yes. I did get a couple calls today from some other groups that are interested, especially in the Belmont Field, and one was Belmont Park uh -huh. uh, So they, they showed some interest. I talked to them very briefly about it. I think maybe if we can, when we meet with Jeremy Wednesday, uh, 
you know, we, we can meet a uh, public threat, maybe we should discuss some options that are out there. You know, the, the, you know, they did say they could take care of the field, they, they have volunteers to take care of the field. But I think it's some things that we have to discuss for other uses of this open space. Um, and with that, uh, and, uh, I have an announcement um, that Health and Recreation will be meeting this Wednesday morning at 9 a.m. here in room um, 110, the Health and Recreation Committee, to discuss um, a couple things regarding the parks. Um, and the, uh, additionally, the Affirmative Action Advisory Committee will have their first organizational meeting on August 27th at 6.15 p.m. in room 209. Is there anything else? Tell me for Health and Recreation. Oh, I'm sorry, we recess. Recess, five minutes second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Adjourn. We're recessed. We're recessed because recess. that meeting on Wednesday. Oh, yes, that's a new meeting has been announced. New meeting? Right. So, so it's a new meeting. Okay. So, so we're adjourned. adjourned. Okay, call to order public service and utilities. Um, efficiency, energy efficiency and water system improvement project, Mr. LaFond. Good evening. Good evening. Any information you have in front of you? We request to enter into an agreement with Johnson Control Systems for a professional development agreement. Uh, for the last couple of years, we've been looking at our water meters throughout the city. Um, we have about 1,450 um, active accounts. Meters range anywhere from one year old to 75 years old. It's a mishmash of meters. Um, when we read it, we're antiquated, where we have a meter reader go out, take an actual photograph of the meter, he comes back to the office, we subtract the last one from the present. It's very time consuming, not efficient. Um, so this uh, professional development agreement is performance contract based. And what Johnson Control does, they come in, they do an in-depth evaluation of the meters. Um, they do typing and sizing. Um, and the revenues gained should pay for the project. The cost of this is $52,500. Um, it's only paid if the city doesn't enter into agreement to do the full meter replacement. These are automated uh, meter, re, uh, automatically read meters. So, um, Village of Scotia just went through a meter upgrade. They did about 4,000 meters with Johnson Controls. Uh, I did go on a uh, ride along with them. They read 500 meters in less than an hour. Um, we're reading roughly 1,450 meters and it's taking us about four and a half months. We've already done some attrition over the last couple of years with the meter reader at the IPS online office. And if we move forward with this project, those positions don't have to be filled. But um, if we don't move forward with this project, I'm going to need the help because we're just we're not efficient I'm pulling a guy off the distribution, you know, to read the meters and then shorts me the distribution system. Um, if the project moves along, $52,000 is rolled into the cost of the total project. We do have funding set aside over the last few years for the meter replacement and capital funds that we have put aside that would come out of there. Questions? I have a question. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, you don't. Go ahead. Um, you said for the total project, so do you have an estimated cost of what the total project is? No, not yet. They'll go out and they'll actually look at the meters because the one thing right now is the city doesn't own the meters. Mm -hmm. The residents do. So one of the problems we have is when we send out notice to replace the meters, no incentive for them to replace the meter. Um, so what we would do in this is this moves forward. Uh, we would uh, look at law, change the city code, where we would take the responsibility and ownership of the meters. The meters become ours because essentially the meter is our cash register. What goes in goes through that meter is what we're building for. If they're not accurate, we're losing revenue every day. And we know that there's a number of meters, 50, 60, 70 years old, they're not accurate any longer. And the one thing I don't believe that was ever done was sizing and piping. I mean, to put a meter in, you just don't put a, a meter in. It has to be sized and it has to be tight. And I hope Ed is familiar with that. And that's something that um, they would do. They did a very good job in Scotia. I talked to the uh, superintendent of public works there. Extremely pleased um, with the work that they did. Um, they reduced the vehicle on the road from every day of the week for, you know, 10 months out of the year to a couple of days. Thank you. Um, yeah, just um, follow up. You said that Scotia has 4,000 water meters? It's 30 some hundred meters, yeah. So what's they the did difference? Everything. They did residential yeah, as well. We only have commercial. That's what my question yes. was. So they did do residential as well. We're, we're limited to commercial and uh, right, four understand. units are greater. All right, very good. That was 
Or we'd be doing about 16,000. Yeah, we'd be doing about 16,000. Good. And how much do we have set aside for this? I know Roughly over the last a few years, I think there's about uh, 1.4 or 1.5 million dollars set aside to do the meter free. Okay, I'll help that with it's, it's an expensive process. I believe, uh, I don't, I'm not sure what uh, Scotia spent, but I could actually find out and send out an email to you. Oh, that would yeah. be great. But again, they did, they did rough, almost 4,000 meters. Okay, and we're still in the Yeah. Mm -hmm. Are there other questions? Just one, it's just, can that one update? What's, what's, did we lose a main on going? Yes, today? yes. At around 3.30, just above the break, yeah. happened maybe seven or eight yeah. years ago. Yeah, we had the washout. Yep. yep, it's already closed. They've already got it open. Uh, they should be done within a couple hours. Um, well, there's 10 feet of seven-year-old pipe, and the rest of the pipe is about 85 years old. Oh. Any other questions for Mrs. Lafon? Wet water in the house. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're, you're above Campbell, so you Just can. so I know. I have a sign, so it's <laughs> from Campbell down to um, <laughs> Broadway going into the old subway. Uh, they're out of water there uh, temporarily. Well, short temporary? They should be done within a few hours. Uh, typically, the, the crew is, they're, they're good. They get, they get in, they get out, the back truck is there. They already have the hole opened up. Uh, they have a pump in there, and um, I, I left there about five after five to come back down here, so. But they will be working on another planned valve replacement about four o'clock this morning, this tomorrow morning, on Union Street. So that's a planned, um, as long as they won't go into the problems tonight. Do they know the president's coming? Yes, they've been informed, health department's informed, yes. Mr. Munavera? Uh, when are we looking to start this project? This study? Uh, this study? Yes. Um, we'll enter once the, the professional development agreement is signed after next Monday night, and it gets signed by the mayor and Mr. Law, uh, we'll, we'll have them start. We've already started giving them some information working with John Kluja because a lot of it's extracting information out of Munis, out of our meters. And the one thing we realize is the Munis system is only going up to six inch meters. Now I know we have a couple of eight inch meters in the city. We have one in this was after this in Woodlawn by uh, Albany and um, where the old uh, drum sound used to be. Munis doesn't have it listed our eight inch meters. So we've got to now physically go out and look and see which ones are eight inch, including some of the meters in GE. Because they start with the larger meters because the larger meters are your you get more revenue from your larger meters, not the one inch meters in the you know, in a small commercial building. So uh, we're trying to extract the information for them, uh the help of John Coluccio and um, Tyler Industries. And they'll move on right away. Thank you. That would be me. I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Anything else before public service? Thank you. Not all. Thank you. Thank you. All those in favor? Aye. Adjourn. I'll fill in the board of claims. Hopefully, second session. 219, grade one. We can do this in the session. 219, grade one. Yep. So, a property that old firehouse over on Brady One Avenue. Sorry, I don't have to do map here. So basically, council approved the sale a couple of meetings ago. And that's this park store right here. Uh, the seal was actually for the old gray shaded area. It turns out this is part of the paper street, which didn't have an SPL. When the resolution was written that the council passed, it only was for this area because they thought the SPL was the whole area. So, a, a title insurance company is actually going to saw that and decided that they would really like to see uh, amended resolution in order to ensure the title. So we're just doing amended resolution. It's the same exact deal that was described to the council that was passed. There's nothing changing in terms of it. It's just the way the resolution was written. Yeah. The city did at the end of that as part of the post sale two years ago or more, and the sale didn't happen. And part of it was that after the end of it, consolidated into one lot and the consolidation never happened. So it's been part of the sale. It's the whole the two parcels but will end up being consolidated into one parcel for uh, future reference. I'll move it. Second. Okay. Aye. Aye. Right, I'll move we go into executive session. Second. All in favor. Aye. Aye.
give me an extra second. I'm short-handed here today.